and is a thief. Up ahead to Gilbert Arenas, the freshman, two of his 16 Arizona up by seven. But back comes Oregon State, DeAndre Tanner. DT, nice move and the foul, 20 points for him. The Beavers on a nine zip run, under 10 to go. Arizona down three, Gardner. Desperation three, and he's fouled by Jimmy Haywood. So Gardner gets three free throws and a chance to tie it up. Gardner is only a freshman, right? Hits the first two free throws. And then he's going to hit the third to tie the game at 60. Meanwhile, 1.5 seconds left. Richard Jefferson stealing the inbound pass. We go to overtime. In overtime, Gardner catching fire. Gardner, three of eight from three-point range. And it was Gardner again drilling the three. He had 16 points, including nine straight points to put Arizona up six. But back come the Beavers. Josh Steinfall feeding Jason Heidi. And Heidi, tough shot. 13 points for him. Oregon State down one. Seven seconds left. Oregon State down by two. Just listen. DeAndre Tanner is the man. DT coming through with a big victory for the Beavers. Oregon State's second straight home win against Arizona. Those are their only two victories in their last 21 games against the Wildcats. The Beavers' first victory over a top three team since December of 1989 when they beat number two, Arizona. Top-ranked Stanford has won its last three by a total of 113 points. Just what USC needed to hear. They saw it firsthand. Jerron Collins, 19 points, 10 boards. Stanford in control. USC, desperate. Casey Jacobson, who scored 23, gets the pass near the Trojan's fence. There's a whistle. USC's Jarvis Turner in street clothes on the bench gets a T for grabbing Jacobson's jersey. Hey, keep your hands to yourself. All Cardinals second half. Michael McDonald inside of Mosley. Mosley's been lifting and Stanford steamrolls, number one team in the country. How hideous Bob Huggins' face would look were his team were 2-26 and 26 rather than 26-2. and two. The Cincinnati coach took that record to DePaul along with his usual complaints about his underachievers. He's been on the guys about slacking during second halves of games lately and that concern had a parallel Thursday night. Last season, Cincinnati beat DePaul 87-64 at home in the first meeting, then lost at DePaul in overtime in the rematch. This season, Cincinnati again beat DePaul 87-64 at home in the first meeting. The second half of the season series is our showcase, seen right here. And this guy sat it out, did not play. Coach's decision, Pete Michael, more on him shortly. First half, DePaul's going from out front. Rashawn Burno get a feed to Quentin Richardson. DePaul up by one, and Richardson hit that. And then this, Ibid. DePaul's up 23-15. You can see the indecision. Watch this as they're running the ball up the court. Now right here, we're going to see them reverse the basketball. See right here? They don't know who's going to come out on them. They're saying, who got them? Lack of communication, and there it is. Drop it down. Nothing but nylon. Dickie V going wild with the Telestrator Crans. Still in the first half. Shot clock winding down. Kenny Hartfield launching. That's the making of Upset City. That's how upsets happen, baby. More enthusiasm out of him. 36-29 at the break. Paul McPherson, the bounce pass inside. Richardson, the tough shot to Paul's. Built the lead to 11. And then going back outside. Rashawn Burno. Ricola. The Paul's up 46 to 31. Outside again. Richardson. The Paul was 8 to 20 from the three-point area in the game. Blue Demons out by 17. Cincinnati gets a go, though. Steve Logan off the turnover. And pushing it, giving it up to Kenny Satterfield. He will finish a 10-0 run. It's 51-44. The Bearcats are down. Also, the Bearcats are down. And getting back in it off the miss. Kenyon Martin fighting through big bodies in traffic. Trip but scored, plus he's fouled. Cincinnati's down by 53-46. The Paul right back. Richardson trying to get control. Diving for the loose ball. Burno will find Lance Williams. And he's open to score. DePaul's back up by 55 to 46. Three minutes to go. Just over that. Kenyon Martin taking over the game. Inside. Large mammals in his face, but he puts it home. Cincinnati's within six. And then Martin again getting the feed down low. The fall away will work this time. Cincinnati down by just four. Martin, a one-man show to the end. The turnaround sets himself up to tie the game at 60 apiece. DePaul not finished. Paul McPherson. Trying to get free. The pass to Williams wide open for the dunk. DePaul's up by two. 
And Martin, his turn to come right back. Going baseline. Restaurant quality shot in traffic. Ties it at 62. Now 12 seconds to go. Jermaine Tate sticking his big mid out. He makes the steal. Leaves it for Martin, who goes to DeMar Johnson, the freshman for the jumper. And Cincinnati's up 64 to 62. Two and a half to go. Richardson, a chance to win. Clock's expired. He launches it. But it doesn't count, even though it goes. And Cincinnati comes back to win it by two points. So the second half letdown criticism will not stick this time. The Bearcats outscored DePaul by 11 in the final 20 minutes. The deficit was 17 at one point and 10 with 3.46 to play. All that punctuated by the late Kenyon Martin work at both ends. You saw the Bearcats played without Pete Michael. He was parked for undisclosed disciplinary reasons. But Martin's presence was enough. He scored eight of his 33 in the final 3.46. My position, I felt that we couldn't lose it there, and I just stepped up, and, the, and Coach told him to throw me the ball every time, and I did something with it. We got down, and we just um, we just had to come together as a team and as a family, and I think we did a good job of that tonight. Hey, you talk about your game offensively. It really has come so far from last year. What did you do to get your game to where it is today? It's amazing. That's my confidence. Um, the summer helped me a lot, then and you rated me up there. I couldn't make you wrong, so um, my confidence is up there, so I'm, I'm just trying to help my team win. More on that second half run by Cincinnati right here. Kenyon Martin made eight of the Bearcats' 13 field goals, and Cincinnati shot nearly 50% from the floor in the second half. At the other end, DePaul made six fewer field goals, took nine fewer shots than in the first half. Bob Carpenter and Dickie V now for extra special showcase analysis. Well, here in Chicago tonight, the showcase game lives up to the advanced billing. Unbelievable comeback by the Bearcats and Dick. They did it basically on the shoulders of Kenyon Martin alone. Well, you know, Bob, 17-point lead the Paul had, 13 and a half minutes on a clock, and then it was the Kenyon Martin show. He just absolutely dominated. You see his numbers right here, but he shows why he's America's premier player. Little jump shot shot in the lane. Now here's the little pump face. Another jump shot in the lane. Look at him defensively. He's like a human eraser. He's absolutely dominant. And now there's the little spinning jump shot. He just took the game over. He he was absolutely a one-man determined to bring the W to Cincinnati. At the end of the game, we see the steal here, and DeMar Johnson with some poise pulls up, and he takes his time and knocks it down to give him the lead the first time in many a time they're leading, and this shot was too late. No doubt about it, it goes down. But the refs made a great call. Look at Bobby Hubbard. He's officiating. Bobby's waving it off. And you know what? He can't wait to get to the locker room with that W because they really had to earn it. And, of course, Pat Kennedy's club led all the way up by 17, and they shoot 6 of 15 from the free-throw line. Well, you and I talked about so many times, even during the course of this game, how the free-throw line could be their Achilles heel. I also thought they got very tentative offensively with the lead. Got a little conservative, and Cincinnati took advantage. They changed defenses. You got to salute Bobby Huggins as well. Went to multiple defenses and traps, created opportunities, and then it was the Kenyon Martin show. <laughs> Anybody out there, if you're voting for National Player of the Year, there is no way you could vote for anyone other than Kenyon Martin. Well, exclamation point on that after his performance tonight. Unbelievable comeback. Probably won't hurt to Paul in the NCAA. By the way, guess who got the assist on the game-winning basket? You guessed it. Number four. <laughs> In total control, Morris Peterson with the steal, pushing it for himself. Oh, that's fancy. Michigan State coach Tom Izzo obviously unhappy because Peterson didn't do a Vince Carter between the legs dunk. Spartans still going in the second half transition. Mateen Cleese, alley -oop. Jason Richardson, and he has it taking place. Spartans up 37. Cleese still going. The pass to Mike Chappelle. That is fancy. Nine assists for Cleese. And that's an easy win. Chappelle hit four of seven three-pointers after coming into the game shooting under 30% from the three-point area. The Spartans extend their school record to 27 straight home wins, are back in a tie for the Big Ten lead with Ohio State. One game left for each. Wake Forest and Virginia. Wake Forest leading by 10 in the first half. There's a scramble. Josh Shoemaker going to Craig Dawson. He'll launch and hit a three and 11-0 run. Wake up by seven at half. Stephon Donden. Newby! Missed the free throw, but Adam Hall doesn't miss from inside. Plus, he's fouled. He hit the free throw. Virginia up by one. Wake Forest by three now, though, in the second half. Josh Howard, he's driving, and he's scoring. And he, he's traveling, too, but it doesn't matter. Pete Gillen's team goes down by a count of 80 to 75. And Lindquist, the long pass almost picked by Eddie House. Then Darius Wright throws up that mess. He's going to get his name in the paper. The three gives Oregon a two-point win. First time the Ducks have won 20 regular season games since 1945. And bottom of your screen, you see UCLA blew out Cal 
Dan Gadzurik went for Kerhide 22. A case of too much chocolate between Colorado State and New Mexico. New Mexico pushing the ball up court. Take a look at Colorado State's David Fisher and New Mexico's Roland Hanna under the hoop. Now, Kevin Henry will miss the three. Meanwhile, Fisher and Hanna get tangled up. Their bodies rubbing together. They hit the floor hard. Punches are thrown. The officials pull Hanna off of Fisher. And Coach Richie McKay also has to help out in this. Then Coach McKay and New Mexico Coach Fran Fraschilla have to be separated. Take another look. Hanna actually starts the fight with a rabbit punch. Hanna will get ejected and automatically suspended for the next game. Friday night, the Penn Quakers went in search of their birthright. A win over Brown combined with a Princeton loss to Yale would give the Penn the title of the first team to qualify for the NCAAs. Outstanding. And run their unblemished record to 12-0 in conference. Fran Dunphy has that finger taste. First half, Quakers by six. Michael Jordan. That Michael Jordan. Pull up, Jay. Penn's Quakers lead by eight, and the headband frenzy is approaching the Ivy Leagues. Still on the first, Frank Brown to Jeff Owens. Who says there are no athletes in the Ivies? Yeah! He had 22, Penn by 13. Second half, Michael Jordan can hit the three. He had 19, and the Quakers clinch at least a share of the Ivy League championship, 85-62. Owens, 22, a career high. They win their 14th straight, stay undefeated, but do not clinch it outright because Princeton beat Yale. The Tigers keep hope alive. State and College of Charleston, first half, the Cougars by eight. Jody Lumpkin, that's a tough shot. Fade away from the post. Charleston by 10 early. Later in the first, the Cougars of John Crest turning defense into offense. Rudy Rothsider with the block. The other way, A.J. Harris looks for Troy Wheelis, and Wheelis lets fly. He had 17, part of a 17-2 Charleston run. More from the Cougs. This is a Bolton to Bowie production, as in Jeff to Layton. Pretty. Two of Bowie's 14th. Charleston up big at the break, and they go on to win 65-51. John Cress's team back in the semifinals. The Cougars remain perfect in league play. In the semis, College of Charleston will play Wofford, a one-point winner over Davidson. Ian They'll meet UNC Asheville, who they waxed by 40 just six days ago. Uh, UNCA, who started the season 0-9, hit a tournament record 36 free throws Friday night. You can catch the Big South final Saturday at 3.30 p.m. on ESPN. Transatlantic Conference, or the TAC. Semifinal matchup, Sanford and Georgia State. That is Reed Rawlings doing what he does best. Scoring when some don't think he will. Sanford leads at 75-72. DJ Woodson driving. Looking for a game time three pointer, but it comes up short and Sanford wins it 83 to 80 behind Mark Sailor's 27. They will meet Central Florida in the other Transatlantic Conference tournaments.